Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy and welcome back to another episode of If My Heart Had Wings. So before we jump in, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button because that would mean the whole world to me. And after this video, if you liked it, hit that like button too. Alright, let's jump in. The vice, uh, the vice president turns from facing Kotori and Ageha and looks back around at Amane, who is nervously listening behind her. It is up to you, or it is up to you to take immediate action as we have requested. If you need to see the fruits of the club's activities, a few days ago I performed a test flight. Didn't that take place during lesson time? That's outrageous. On the contrary, you should consider that another step closer to the club being abolished. What? Amane staggered back as if she had been hit hard. I guess that's true though, isn't it? On Windmill Hill, when Kotori and I watched the glider flying across the sky, lessons were taking place in the school. Do you understand? A minimum of four members are required in order to be recognized as a club. You must find another three members for the club. Amani looked down with a very grave expression. But this is all done for myself. In that case, it cannot be recognized as a club. Uh, um... I'll join her. I'll join. Huh? I raise my hand, and the others look or all look at me. You are the boy who transferred here recently, aren't you? You must be Aoi Minas or Minase. The vice president looks at me as if she is evaluating me. I'll tell you this now. We will not allow there to be ghost members. I know. This is the reason why I came here today. I had decided this morning. Well, yesterday, actually. I still don't know much about gliders, though. I just thought it would be interesting. I feel excited just to imagine flying it, riding on the wind. If it's, or if Senior Amane will allow me to, that is. E yeah, if you say you want to join, I don't mind. But I'm only doing this for myself, you know. I still don't know much about gliders or about you either, Amane. But if that's what you want to do, then I'd like to help you. As I state my reasons, the vice president looks as though she isn't convinced. It looks like some transfer student, who doesn't even understand the situation, has come barging in trying to act like a hero. I can't say that there isn't some element of that to it. Well then, I'll join too! Ageha raised her hand in a really casual manner. Huh? Even with everyone looking at her, Ageha appears aloof. Is it okay that I'm also a member of the robot club? Yeah, that's fine, but... What are you doing, Ageha? What? It looks like fun! One person left. Everyone naturally looks over towards Kotori. What? Kotori turned her wheelchair sideways to avoid everyone's line of sight. I'm not joining. As Kotori says this, the vice president made a face that seemed relieved yet disappointed. You still need one more person. There's no way it can be recognized as a club as things stand now. If it's, or if it's decided that it can't be allowed, what will happen? First, you will have to vacate the, uh, this garage. Hmm. Amane looks really distressed. Well, of course she does. If there's nowhere to keep the or this giant glider, the club's activities cannot continue. There's myself and Ageha, so we will get one more person. Could you wait until then? Very well, I will wait until Friday. If you can't get the club organized by then, it will be reduced to the position of a circle and you will no longer be allowed to use the garage, is that understood? Amane nods in agreement with a, or with a total lack of confidence, and the vice president leaves the garage. Kotori, you're not in any clubs, are you? Can we just give your name, just until we find someone else? I refuse. Kotori bluntly refused and left the garage. So it's no use. We have to do something about it ourselves. Say, you guys. 
We're sorry, Amane, that we caused things to turn out like this. No, you helped me out. If it weren't for you, the club would have had its status taken away. But it is really... Er, but is it really alright with you? That's what I plan to do from now on. Me too! I'm interested in this... Er, in so many ways. Leave gathering members to us. Amane, as for the club's activities, please put something together that will make the vice president understand. Um, yes, I will. Is this alright with you? What is? Today is the first time you've been in the garage, right? Even so, you've suddenly become a member. Hmm, <laughs> but it sure does look like fun! You're here too, Aoi! What am I gonna do with- or what am I gonna do with you? That thing flies, right? You can't possibly tell me not to be excited! Yeah, I know what you mean. Without thinking, I raised my voice. I was happy that Agaha felt the same way. Well, in my case, I'm more interested in making it fly than getting in and flying it myself. I want to try and fly it, and also, she has stayed in school all this time, repeating the year over and over to do this, you know. So they say, Amani doesn't go to lessons and always just stays in the garage. I don't know if that's the truth or not, but what I do know is that she is taking this very seriously. I can't let it all end for some stupid reason, like there not being enough members. First, we have to find a member for the club! Let's try asking him. Oh boy. Here we go. A glider? What's that? Sounds kind of interesting. Doesn't it? So do you want to join the club? Well, I have my part-time job. Also, if I get too friendly with you, Eddie-chan will get jealous, so I have to give it a miss. You'll figure something out. It's fine. She'll never know. Uh, yes, she will. Eddie-chan has friends in this school. So you shouldn't really speak to me. Ugh. You've been like this ever since you got a girlfriend. We're childhood friends, aren't we? What happened to our friendship? I'm busy with the band, so there's no way. We're, we're playing a gig soon, so now we're rehearsing. Uh, you're so cold-hearted. Why don't you ask him? Oh, I mean. I can't ask him. He's already a member. What? So you guys are hanging out again? What? Is there something wrong with that? We want you to come with us too, you know. Who'd want to hang out with him? Tch, tch. Ew, gross! Don't spit! Damn it, Mabo! You're such a pain in the butt! Hey, er, hey, Agaha! Yeah? I don't know. This time, give it your best shot. Huh? What are you talking about? Jeez, just get out of here, will ya? Go on, shoo, shoo! You idiot, Mabo! It was no use. So it was my fault after all. No, he's just busy with his girlfriend, his part-time job, and his band. He's really making the most of being a teenager. In the past, we used to hang out all the time. What are you talking about? If Mabo treated us like we were more important to him than his girlfriend, what do you think would happen? I'm gonna give him the Cobra Twist until he cries! So there's nothing we could do about it? Next is... Oh, that's right, Hotaru comes here, doesn't she? We went to the first grade classroom. When students from the upper grades come to visit, there's a strange air of tension in the classroom. Oh, what's up, Ageha? Aoi? Oh. What is it? Well, this is the first time I've seen you in your uniform. It suits you. When I met her yesterday, she was wearing her own clothes. You kind of look more grown up. I only said it to tease her, but she went red, like she was on fire or something, and got really flustered. Oh, don't say that, Oi. I don't look grown up. Uh. Hey, Oi, don't tease the juniors. I'm kind of teasing her, but actually, I mean what I say. That's even worse. Uh, Ageha looks cuter, doesn't she? Huh? Me? Yeah. See, Oi, the uniform suits her better than me. Oh, hardly. 
Ma Bo said that I'm a. Or, what's oh hardly? Ma Bo said that I'm a boy on the inside. But her appearance has gotten much cuter, don't you think? When Hotaru looks at me with those innocent, sparkling eyes, I cannot tell a lie. Well, yeah, I do think she's gotten cuter. Uh, Aoi! Ugh. I eat an elbow to the ribs. Ouch. Th thanks! I think that you've gotten a lot cooler too, Aoi. Uh, oh! She said the same thing for the second time, this time in the first grade classroom, so of course I feel embarrassed. The reason why I'm looking down is because my ribs hurt, though. Anyway, that's not what we came here to talk about. Ageha, continuing with the momentum from before, talks to Hotaru about how we are looking for members for the Soaring Club. Ageha, you and Aoi are in the same club? Yes, we are! That's why I wondered if you might want to join, too! Well... Oh boy, Hotaru glances at me. No, I'd rather not. Why not? I have to help out at home. Yes, but you only need to help out on Sundays. But from now on... She seems kind of wavering, yet firm in her reply. Maybe there's a reason for it. Okay, we get it, Hotaru, but if you're interested, come anytime. Okay. Oh boy. It's finished. Kotori brings over the, uh, the cucumber that she had crushed into about the right size using a wooden pestle. Is it really okay to do it like this? Yeah, that way it absorbs the flavor a lot better. We're going to marinate the cucumber. Uh, it absorbs the flavor a lot more easily if it is crushed than it is, or than if it is chopped with a knife. Is there anything else left to do? Hmm, I think that's it. Right, I'm off. Hey! What? We still can't find anyone who wants to join the club. We tried all the people we could think of. I see. You seem even more interested in or in it than we are, don't you? The time on Windmill Hill, the first we saw the glider flying. Or when first we saw the glider flying. The time she wandered into the garage and saw the real thing up close. The time we made the paper airplanes and flew them together. Her eyes were always shining like a child's. I can't forget the expression on Kotori's face. She's usually so sulky, or looking as though she's bored, but maybe or but maybe that is what her true expression really is, I thought to myself. If I join the club, I'd just cause problems. What do you mean? No you wouldn't. To be perfectly honest, it would be great if she would just join the club. But I'll soon be she stops mid-sentence and moves her wheelchair along. Hey, can I ask you a question? No. Why do you want to drop out? I said don't ask me! Huh? Kotori looks as though she realized something. It was you after all! You picked up my withdrawal notice! Withdrawal notice? What's that? Does it taste good? Can we have it with tonight's dinner? I play dumb without hesitation. Ugh. You idiot, you moron, you big meanie! I hope you get stuck in a ditch and die! <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> With a bridge of uh, parting shots, Kotori, uh, Kotori hurried away. Jesus! That was, uh, that was a bit much. We can't seem to find anyone. It's been two days since I joined the Soaring Club. Since then, whenever we had any spare time, Ageha uh, has been or Ageha has been trying really hard to find members. Everyone seemed interested, and yet not quite enough to join the club. It's as I thought. Everyone's scared of Amane. 
She's not that scary, is she? It's not that. She's just too incredible. Oh, I, you've only just transferred here, so maybe you don't really know how it is. That girl is like a living legend in our school. I know firsthand that her weirdness is legendary. Also, there are rumors that she's antisocial. The basis of such rumors is not clear, but she doesn't have any friends. Hardly ever shows up for classes and is locked away in the garage basically the whole time. Even when she does come out, she's always alone and doesn't have any contact with anyone. If you look at it like that, she certainly seems quite antisocial. The club is led by Amane, right? It looks like people are worried that they won't be able to keep up with her. Then there's one other reason. Oh, that rumor? There is something that I learned from looking for members. It is, er, it is something said only in whispers, like some urgent, er, like some urban legend. If you get involved with the soaring club, you might attract the attention of Mr. Tobioka. Is that true? Maybe. However, it's not impossible, is it? Mr. Kujira Tobioka. His first name means whale, but he's not as big in size as you might imagine. But it said his attitude is larger than life. I've seen him before, and he's the teacher acting as moral advisor, and he's the nagging annoying type. There were a lot of teachers like that at my old school, but here, he's a bit of a rarity. Mr. Tobioka is the advisor to the Robot Club. In other words, the advisor to Ageha's club. In the past, Amane achieved amazing things with the Robot Club, like I told you before, right? She was, or she, uh, she was one step away from the national championship, you mean. Ageha nods. And also that she pressed the wrong button on the controller and lost? I know about the person known as Senior uh, Mochizuki to a certain extent, but I didn't think she'd be the sort of person to make such a simple mistake. There's more to that story. Mr. Tobioka was the advisor of the Robot Club at the time, too. But when that happened, he was so full of regret. Yeah, most people would be. I would have felt the same way if I had been in that situation. Well, or we'll get it next time, he said to show his determination, it seems, but... Not long after, Amane all of a sudden quit the Robot Club. Why? Well, I don't know. One explanation is that when Amane lost the national championship, she didn't seem that annoyed about it. Since then, the Keifu Robot Club has been living on the glory of that occasion, and had failed to achieve any decent results. So you mean Mr. Tobioka blamed Amane for it? Ageha made a serious face and nodded. That's ridiculous, but I can't really say that. My last school was good when it came to sports. There's the sports scholarship program, and it was important for the school to get results in tournaments. The advisors and directors of each club are evaluated accordingly, and at times, it may be the turning point in their lives. The Robot Club is the most popular club in the school, and its performance is directly linked to the promotion of the school. Even if Mr. Tobioka blamed Amane, I can't exactly say that it's strange. Are you okay with this? What do you mean? Well, Tobioka is your advisor, isn't he? Are you alright with him keeping an eye on you? Hmm, he might bug me by saying snide comments, but if I use earplugs, I'll be fine. That's not the problem, really, is it? Ageha looked a little confused. I know what you're trying to say, Aoi, but there's something more important at stake, so there's not much I could do about it. What do you mean, more important? Oh, uh, well... <laughs> oh, it's you two. Oh, right. Oh, I mean us, er, mean us say, and Ageha Himegi, wasn't it? Hi. Hello, Vice President. You must be in the middle of gathering new members. It doesn't look like things are going too well, does it? The Vice Principal made a bitter smile as she made her assumptions. Yes, but it all comes down to us fighting one more member. I will tell you this now, but ghost members will absolutely not be accepted. She frankly stated. Hmm, why is that? 
There must be other clubs that have ghost members, right? Why is it only us? The vice president glares at us as we make our childish protests in vain. The other small-scale culture-based clubs are besides the point. The scale of the Soaring Club's facilities is just too big. No other club occupies a garage like that. The Robot Club uses a big, a great big garage too, doesn't it? That has approximately 60 members. They have achieved results in national competitions. But the one who achieved those results was Amane! The Vice President ignores Ageha's grumbling and continues to speak. If the Soaring Club were to vacate the garage, the Light Music Club or the Taiko Drum Study Society could modify it into a practice studio. Also, the RC Club, the Photography Club, and the Film Studies Group want to use it. If a partition were to be added, then it could be re uh, reused as a clubhouse for multiple clubs. If you think about it like that, then there is no way that a club made by gathering ghost members will be accepted. Uh, That's fair enough. We became embarrassed about expressing our childish opinions, and Ageha and I felt small as we looked, or as we looked downwards. However, she let out a little whew as she sighed. If Senior Mochizuki were to ask, there should be some people who would join her. In other words, you're not making any unreasonable demands. Of course not. It's not my intention to get rid of the Soaring Club. This sets a bad example to the other clubs, and I just want to straighten out the situation. But Amane isn't trying to recruit any members herself. It, it is really frustrating. It looks like there's no other way but for me to play the bad guy and give Amane a big kick in the butt. I'm not saying that you have to go that far. Is that okay for you or for you to find proper club members? Because ghost members will definitely not be accepted. The vice president reminded us as she walked away. H Akari is strict, but a good person, isn't she? Yeah, she doesn't seem very flexible though. She seems familiar with the situ or with the students' names and profiles. And it looks like she wouldn't be able to get away with abusing uh, the power that comes with the position. But it's strange, isn't it? What do you mean? That even though Amane suddenly left the robot club, she has been continuing with the soaring club for years. Until she became the super repeat student. Yeah, you've got a point there. Even so, she isn't trying to get any new members. I guess she really isn't or antisocial after all. The more I know about the situation, the less I understand it. After school, Ageha and I headed to the Soaring Club's garage. After all, we're already members. Hey, I'm sorry, guys. As she looks at us, Amane bows her head in apology. Cut it out, Amane! Yeah, seeing you like this, Amane, somehow makes me feel like it's taking years off of my life. It's no- or if it's no good, I plan to leave here without fuss. I'm still looking for a place I could transfer to. Does that mean you're giving up on the club? Amane nods apologetically. Amane, why don't you look for new members yourself? I'm only doing this for myself, so I don't have any reason to involve other people. Is that what she really thinks? Is that because you don't want to let anyone come near this place? If so, then we... No, that's not it! People are always welcome to come and take a look. But how about becoming members? Oh, I don't know. If they don't... Or if they don't, then I know I would be able to stay here. Or I won't be able to stay here. That would be a big problem. But as for what I should do, I still haven't been shown the answer. Amane looked, or really looked distressed, and became dis or despondent. If we ask any more questions, all we'll be doing is cornering her even more. Anyway, once you've built the glider, what do you plan to do next? Enter a competition? We could use the club's objectives as material for our recruitment drive. As far as the quick check that we did goes, apparently there are competitions for gliders too. Competition? No, I'm not planning to enter anything like that. 
Huh? So what are you going to do? There's a place I want to go to. Amane gave a smile. It seemed just like she was about to start reminiscing about old times. A place you want to go to? That's what Isuka said. Once the glider is complete, we can go there. Isuka? She said that name before. It will fly to the sky that Isuka spoke of. Looking as if memories had come flooding back, she looked at the photo frame on the desk. The photo frame without a photo. She looked like she had gone into her own little world, and it didn't seem like we could ask her any more questions. Well then, we'll be off! To search for people who might join the club. Whatever answer Amane gives us, avoiding having the club's status repealed was the top priority. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, instead of that, please try to do something that can demonstrate the club's activities. Okay, got it. It was past nine o'clock at night. In the kitchen, I was washing the dishes for five people. In the dormitory, there were six people, including myself, but... Kotori didn't show up for dinner or to help prepare beforehand and was shut away in her room. Just in case, I put her dinner in the fridge. If she gets hungry, she can eat it whenever she wants. Maybe she's feeling down. Why does she want to drop out of school? Is it because of what Ageha said? That it was because of the argument she had with the girls in the class? Is it because the, or the lessons are boring? Or could it be something that I don't know about? It's possible. It could even be something that, uh, that not even she understands. I, of all people, can't really say anything about other people. I don't think that anyone would understand the real reason why I came back to this town. To be honest, I still haven't really solved uh, things for myself. As I, begin, or as I began to feel kind of down, I was surprised to hear the sound of footsteps stomping, or stomping down the hallway. Aoi! Kanako! Aoi, do something! Wh what is it? Could it be that you were attacked by a pervert? While I had my back to her, I couldn't stop my eyes from looking around in her direction. No, not that! It's Kotori! Huh? Someone had taken Kotori's clothes off? No, that can't be it! She said she's having a bath by herself and she won't listen to us. Oh, why don't you let her take a bath? No way! She says she's gonna get into the bathtub. In the bathtub? The wheelchair was in the bath's uh, dressing room. It was the wheelchair that Kotori used when in the bathroom. She always used that when she took a shower. I've never seen her do that, of course. She can't get into the bathtub while still in the wheelchair. For her to get into the bathtub, she needed someone to help her. Her older sister isn't here, is she? She said she couldn't wait any longer. According to what I'd heard, Kotori has an older sister. She only gets into the bathtub when she comes here. Anyway, her sister hadn't come around here recently. At least, not since I'd become the dorm mother. No! Leave me alone! I have a shower every day, so I felt like taking a bath. That's why I asked you to just let me in. No way! That's sexual harassment! Get lost! That's why I need you to do it, Dorm Mother. Help her into the bath. What? Kanako seemed to say, I'm not coming with you, as she left me by, my, er, by myself. Hey, wait! She left me behind. Or as she left me behind, I turned to face Kotori. Alright, shall I help you get in? She was glaring at me with an angry look on her face. I could get in the bath by myself. Yeah, but... Hmm. Hey, hold on! Kotori went into the dressing room and closed the door. If she does that, I can't exactly go barging in there all of a sudden. If you have any problems, call me right away, okay? I won't let you peek! She replied in a scary voice. There's nothing else I could do, so I wait outside. I sit down in front of the dressing room door, just like I'm guarding it. 
This isn't really that important, but I er, but to have one guy in a girl's dormitory makes taking a bath really inconvenient. I'm the only one who has a set time. If or if I inadvertently run into any of them in here, I can't just get away with an apology. From the bathroom, I could faintly hear the sound of the shower. She must be washing herself off before getting into the bath. I could hear the sound of the water lightly splashing. I feel kind of nervous. The limited information I get from the sound actually stirs my imagination. I am strong or I am strongly aware of the fact that Kotori is getting into the bath. What am I thinking? If she knew what I was imagining, she's probably trying to tear me limb from limb. Uh, and as I try to clear the thought from my head, I react by getting up, opening the dressing room door, and dashing inside. Oh no. <laughs> Are you okay? I jumped into the bathtub and lift Kotori out while she uh, wiggled and struggled with her hands out of the bath. <laughs> hey, snap out of it, Kotori! Kotori was still panicking and clung desperately as I rescued her. You're okay now. <sighs> Kotori looked at me. It looked like she didn't know who or even what she was clinging to. <sighs> it's alright, everything's fine now. Yeah. Kotori weakly nodded while still holding on to me tightly. I continued to hold on to her to calm her down. Uh... Oh no! <laughs> Both of us suddenly realized what we had failed to realize before. Kotori was just wearing a towel, holding her. <laughs> oh, um, I'm sorry! For a moment, we didn't say anything, but she couldn't exactly kick me out, so we just held on to each other. Um, uh... Kotori tries to hide her chest, but squeezes even closer to me. It's... it's okay, I'm not looking. Kotori goes bright red and looks like she's about to cry. I'll go now, sorry. I was about to put Kotori down on the floor. I thought that if I went to call for Kanako, then everything would be cleared up. D don't go. Weakly, yet desperately, she held on to me. But... I'm embarrassed, but... But... Please. Kotori's hands were shaking slightly. I remember that time, when we first met on Windmill Hill. Okay. I nod, and it seems like her shaking has subsided a little. Thank you. We stayed like this for a while, and Kanako, uh, poked her head into the bathroom to take a look. I heard a big noise. What happened? Well, this and that. So this is the result of ignoring Kanako's advice. But if we were to say something like that in front of the tearful, shaking K uh, Kotori, I would feel really bad for her. It seemed that Kanako was implying the same thing. Could you get a bath towel? Okie dokie. Then, could you cover Kotori up? Okie dokie. While Kanako put the towel around her, Kotori quietly held on to me. After that, Kotori calmly got into the bath with Kanako. Kanako also uh, made sure not to meddle unnecessarily and was very considerate toward, uh, towards Kotori to help her calm down. While I was doing the doormother's jobs in the kitchen, Kotori had gotten out of the bath and came to see me. She looked pretty embarrassed. Thanks for just now. Well, I... <laughs> it was nothing. I stopped myself from saying something like, That's another one of the doormother's jobs. The reason why I did that just now was not because I'm... Or was not because I'm the doormother. You must have been shocked that I can't get into the bath by myself. Um... I didn't know how to answer, and Kotori left me behind and went back to her room. No, I wouldn't say shocked. Hello, sis? 
No, it's nothing. I'm not crying. Um, it's about school. That thing we were talking about before. Yeah. Yeah. I made up my mind. Ooh. Wonder if she's really gonna drop out then. It went that way! Or it went that way! Leave it to me! At Ageha's signal, I ran ahead to block the cat's escape route. Ageha and I blocked the stray cat's path, and it searched for a third route. And there was... Come here, kitty! Well, there was Kotori as she made an almost sickeningly cheerful smile. See, I've got those anchovies that you like, and there's and there are so many of them. Now that and now that's how to talk to a cat. Kotori dangles an anchovy, which captivates the cat. However, as expected of a stray cat, it won't let its uh it won't let down its guard easily. Kotori, use the secret weapon. Kotori <clears throat> nods and takes out a small fishing rod. An anchovy hangs on the end of the line. Look, look! <laughs> Just like a blessing uh, descending from heaven, the anchovy draws the stray cat's attention. With Kotori's skillful waving of the rod, she was almost literally reeling the cat toward her with the anchovy. Come on, come on! Just as the cat reaches out its paw, Kotori times the pulling away of the anchovy so that the cat cannot reach it. It really was a little bit mean. Eventually, the cat running out of patience used its last resort. The cat jumped up onto Kotori's lap all by itself. I got you! Amazingly, the cat settled into Kotori's arms. Alright! The plan was a, he or was a big success! I can't believe it fell for such a stupid plan. I felt like saying, come on, stray cat, you can do better than that. Hey, <laughs> good kitty. Kotori shows a side that we'd never seen before and smiles affectionately while stroking the cat. The cat seems like he didn't really enjoy being stroked, but he's focused on the large amount of anchovies nearby, so it looks like he's not planning on running away. You're cute, aren't you? You're a good boy, aren't you? This cat is quite beautiful considering he's a stray. Hello there! Ageha start, uh, starts stroking him too. All girls like cats. Is it okay if I stroke him too? See, this cat's not scared. We went to so much trouble to catch him. We can't let him go now. Hmm, but I like cats too. This seems a bit unfair. What's next? Next is... I open the notebook to check. Things I want to do. It's the list of bullet points that Kotori has written in her notebook. First of all, Stroke a Cat has been completed. We are now in the middle of clearing Kotori's list of things she still has left to do. As Ageha and I look at the notebook, Kotori looks at us sideways, but not with suspicion. How did the situation occur? To answer that, we need to go back to this morning. This morning, I was in two mind or I was in two minds as to whether or not I should return the withdrawal notice that I picked up to its rightful owner. Of course, you should give dropped items back to the owner, but if I did that, it seems that she would disappear from here, so I didn't give it back. If that's what she wants to do, I have no reason to stop her. But I was hesitant for some reason. So, I was walking back and forth along the hallway, but... Kotori, who was wearing her uniform, poked her head out from, uh, from her room. She was f furt uh, f furtively checking the situation outside. Uh, as our eyes met, she slams the door shut. Why is she acting so suspicious? Kotori is always doing something suspicious, but there is definitely something behind her behavior just now. I concealed myself in the dining hall for a while. I wait ten minutes. Hat appears from the little door at the bottom of Kotori's bedroom door. 
Hat took a look around the entrance or the entrance way, then came into the dining hall. Shh. <laughs> Hat goes back to Kotori's room. There was no one there. All right. What does she mean by all right? Kotori come or came sneaking out of her room. She took a peek into the dining hall just in case, and I hide behind the counter. Looks like no one's here. If that guy catches me, he'll make such a fuss. When she says that guy, it feels like she's talking about me. Kotori is wearing her uniform, but she isn't carrying her bag. In the entranceway, she opens up her notebook and looks inside. I sneaked up behind her. I did this before, so today... Are you going to skip school again today? <laughs> Kotori jumped, let out a scream, and threw the notebook. <laughs> what are you doing here? But I just checked! That's why you should stop sending a duck to scout for you. As I picked up the notebook that she dropped, I, or I look at the open page. Things I want to do. This is the page I saw before. Give my notebook back! Could it be that you were planning to do all of this before you quit school? Uh, seems like I was spot on. I'm going to finish all of these remain- or all of these things. Wait, I'm going to finish all the things remaining today. That's enough, now give it back! I handed back the notebook. Then I follow Kotori as she's about to leave. Why are you following me? I'm going to help. Huh? Why? It must be tough by yourself, right? Kotori looks at me like I'm an idiot. While we stop in, the f or in front of the door, the doorbell rings. Who could it be at this time? Good morning! Ageha! Oh, you're both here? Oh, what did you come here for? Well, I... Ageha pulls me towards her and whispers into my ear. Yesterday, something felt a bit strange, and I thought she might try- or that she might start skipping school again! So, she came all the way here to ask, uh, Kotori to go to school with her? Bullseye. Seriously? Yeah, the truth is that. How should I explain this? Kotori, I'm gonna- or I'm just gonna borrow your notebook. I go back to Kotori and take the notebook. Uh, hey! Using that, I explain the situation to Ageha. I explain that today she wants to finish the things I want to do list that is written in this notebook. I don't tell her about Kotori's plan to quit school. This looks like a big job! Ageha groans a little as she looks at the list. That's right. That is why I'm taking a day off school. I guess that's the only way. I'll help too! And that's how we ended up here. <laughs> that is how Ageha and I ended up going with Kotori against her wishes to clear the things remaining on the list one by one. By the way, as far as us urgently searching for members for the club goes, last night we came up with a possible prospect. That's why we're going with Kotori. That's enough, now go to school you two, said Kotori while stroking the cat, but we didn't listen. Okay, next is a pedigree at Ito's house. Ageha pointed in red. Stroke the head of the big dog in the neighborhood. It's really scary, but it might be unexpectedly friendly. If possible, I'd like to ride around on its back. From the list. The Ito family are rich and have a well-known and very large dog named Pedigree that, uh, that roams around freely in their garden. When we were kids, it was rare to see such big dogs, and we would often watch him lumbering around their spacious lawn. I'd like to- or I'd like to ride around on its back? So far, I have lifted up Kotori on two occasions. Both times, she was light as a feather. Well, perhaps that's exaggerating slightly, but she was really light. If it's Kotori, she should just be able to do it! <laughs> or he is a St. Bernard after all! Pedigree is the St. Bernard. They're pretty huge. Well, seriously, considering Kotori's silly idea, we headed towards the Ito's house.
Oh, or, huh, I've started to sweat, said Ageha as she put the baggage down on the grass. But there's a breeze here, which feels good. But that is all the time that I have for today's episode, guys. So if you liked it, hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe. I love you guys so much, and I will see you next time. Bye!